Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you had a nice lunch and a good morning so far, or good day so far, despite our technical glitches this morning. Um, welcome to the fur or afternoon session. Actually, um, you are uh, attending Teens and Vaccines podcast, COVID nineteen vaccine outreach by Youth for Youth. Um, and Nicole Corp will be introducing the team um, in, a, in a minute. But before we get to that, I want to um, just let you all know that if you are experiencing technical glitches similar to this morning, you can first refresh your browser and then click on the standalone player under the screen to open up um, to another window, which should help um, you know reduce you know the echoing and what have you. And then go ahead and close your original browser window. Um, so hopefully um, that will work. Um, we we'll just want to let everyone know that um, the presenters um, have a great presentation for you, um, but they will take Q&A at the very end. So they'll save about the last 10 minutes. So um, go ahead and type your questions into the chat um, for perhaps questions that are more logistic. Um, we can answer that and questions that can't be answered, I think, in written form, we'll go ahead and try to do that. Otherwise, we'll hold the questions until the very end. Um, so at this point, I'm Did she cut out there? All right. Well, I would just go ahead and introduce our teen broadcasters. Yeah. Um, we have Anita, Alyssa, Sierra, and Michaela. And so they'll be telling a little bit more of their stories throughout the presentation. And so we're going to go ahead and, and kick off with Michaela. Michaela, can you hear us? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, and happy Tuesday. So, we are the Tunes and Vaccines podcast. Um, we are a COVID-19 vaccine outreach um, podcast for teens, by teens, and we are just all very excited to have you here with us. Just very, very excited. <laughs> okay, so we have nothing to disclose here. Um, we're just here to have a good time and to talk about the podcast that we created. So again, like Nicole said, my name is Michaela. Um, we have Anita, Alyssa, and Ziara with us. And we all joined this podcast in early April. And we've been having a great time with it. So our objectives, and I apologize, y'all, the lagging is so bad, but our objectives for this presentation is to one, understand the importance I think we just, our, one of our speakers just went away. Um, okay. Can someone else try to continue in her absence? 
Yeah, I can go ahead and take care of it. Um, for our objectives, the first one is to understand the importance of sharing young people's perspectives and experiences throughout COVID-19. Um, hopefully, you'll we'll also learn how to effectively plan, facilitate, and lead youth-led and youth-centered COVID-19 vaccine outreach. And lastly, describing media's role in effectively reaching and connecting youth with shared experiences. So I think Michaela's back on. If it's still lagging, um, maybe turn off your camera and then just speak. Maybe that will help a little bit. Um, if not, we'll get, we're going to get started with a little game. Um, so we're hoping that you can use the chat. We want to see your responses. So for the first question, um, what was your favorite song as a young person? We want you to, to think back um, and put those hats on and just think, what was my favorite song? Um, think back to when you were in high school, maybe early, early college years. Um, we want to hear your thoughts. Um, Anita, Alyssa, Sieto, do you have any favorite yeah, songs right now? Right now, I have to say Adele's easy on me. I feel like that's the okay, immediate. Is this better? <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's a good song. All right. Yeah. Okay. Black Magic Woman. So we're going to play a quick game and just answering. Yeah. Cool. So we have high school. In high school, it was Material Girl by Madonna. Yes. Okay. All right. Maybe you didn't have a favorite song, but maybe you had a best high school memory. So what was that? If you don't mind sharing with us, um, maybe after this presentation, you'll want to pull out your yearbooks from, from back in high school or college. Graduating from high school, yes, yeah, always a good memory. For the spe for our speakers who are having a little bit of trouble, um, go ahead and turn off your camera. I think that will help a little bit. We have a lot of leaving high schools. I hope it wasn't too bad. Maybe you were just very excited to go to college or very excited for your next steps. All right, junior prom. My first kiss. All right, I, we're, we're getting personal here. I love it. Hopefully this will make for great conversation later. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and skip the advice part. So we're just gonna go into what would have been engaging for you as a young person? So thinking this was a youth led uh, podcast. This was all run by young people. And so what would have been something that you would have really liked um, and felt was engaging? as a young person. All right, I'll read some of these other answers. We have sports. All right, we really like sports. Making the tennis team. All right, we're back with the songs. I love you like a love song by Selena Gomez. Yes, yes, it is. It is trending again. It is a good song. She's still, she's amazing. Um, a strong black male role model. Yes. Having a non-judgmental adult to talk with. Being able to speak without judgment or being dismissed by adults. I do. I feel like there's a trend. Um, yes. So, and then reaching out and getting involved uh in more school clubs one-on-one -on -one time with an adult stronger relationships with adults non-families yes and so we're seeing a trend here a lot of them are relationship based a lot of them are really positive young adult um 
and adult mentor relationships. And so hopefully throughout this presentation, um, our fabulous young teen podcasters will be talking a little bit more about their experience and then sharing with you all how you as an adult can be a um, an amazing uh, a mentor um, moving forward. So I will hand this over to Sieta. Hello, Hello everyone. My name is Yara Carrillo. I am currently a junior at Southern Adventist University. I'm actually double majoring in both marketing and film production. And most importantly, I am one of the podcasters for the Teens and Vaccines. So what is Teens and Vaccines? Let's start with the who. So it's only three players. We got passionate teen, teens, uh, Zoom and SoundCloud. That's it. Three players for one big impact. And what was that impact that we wanted to do? It was to encourage youth to learn from others and learn to break cycles of repetition. So throughout the pandemic, we heard a lot about risks through adults, like who is vulnerable, the adults, of what kind of changes were happening in the economy um, and what the job force uh, changes were. Um, and yet we didn't hear much about what was going on with the youth in the news. Like a big thing was fear. We had confusion during the pandemic too. It wasn't just the adults. Also fear of online schooling, what kind of changes it would be from going um, from in classroom, seeing all your classmates to learning about history on your bed. <laughs> so, and then also the fear of missing important things that happen, such as um, a lot of you mentioned before, like one of the things that you, best memories that you had was graduation. A lot of people were not able to graduate in their high schools. They had to do it online. So it was a huge change. Also, social interactions, seeing your friends, seeing your teachers, being able to have that one on one connection. And this is a such like in high school, uh, schooling just in general is a prime time to learn how the world is before we go into it. And so I think that's where we had the drive for this podcast. Teens were not alone in the pandemic. In this podcast, um, we wanted our stories to be heard. We wanted uh, to have a medium to share um, our, our feelings about the podcast like this. I'm gonna move on to our main topic of the day. We're really gonna talk about experiences, especially COVID experiences. Personally, I feel throughout the whole pandemic, we haven't really heard many teen stories about having COVID and all that jazz. Our voices kind of get silenced and that's why we created this podcast. So we get to talk and talk to our audience and, you know, talk it all out at this point. So we can all hear each other's experiences. So in our last two episodes, we discussed you know, what we wish um, would have happened differently and things of that nature. So that was just a little snippet of the podcast, kind of introducing um, uh, how we had the, uh, how we were able to talk about our experiences. And through this podcast, um, we also figured out that, uh, uh, we also figured out that it's a place to learn. Um, we even had a doctor come on the show like this. I had, and as far as immunizations, like you were talking about, you know, different variants. Um, will there be another vaccine that we might have to get? I personally am vaccinated, uh, fully vaccinated. And uh, is there gonna, like, are we getting another booster perhaps? Well, uh, great questions. And, um, you know, good to think about your, uh, your parents and making sure they're protected. But yeah, you know, the amazing, there were some good things that actually happened as a result of COVID-19, you know, maybe sort of Zoom technology, telemedicine. I mean, that's really cool. I can join you now from, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles away or wherever. But uh, another thing is mRNA vaccine technology. So now that we've sort of crossed this bridge, it's kind of like the same thing of going to the moon in the 1960s. You know, now we have these incredible tools 
So if we have variants that are coming up, you know, say Delta, or I don't know if you've heard about Delta Plus, which is the latest variant that's probably stronger than Delta and could rage over the whole world, uh, we have the tools to, uh, to address this. So we could be making uh, vaccines for these variants very soon. You know, I'm talking, you know, months, maybe uh, November, December, and have, you know, tools available if this thing ricochets back. So that was great. We were able to get some questions answered. And essentially, this podcast was just a place that we could vent. In this podcast, we got closer with all of um, all of the podcasters, Anita, Alyssa, Michaela, and every time we always had check-ins, school updates, and even driver's license updates like this. Yes, and Chrissy, do you have any updates? How was your driving test, girl? Oh, yeah. Like I mentioned a few episodes ago, I had my driver's test scheduled. It was actually last week, and I passed. Thank yeah. everybody. Yes. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> it, went, it went pretty well. Like, I didn't expect it to be that easy, but, you know, I'm not complaining. But, yeah, other than that, everything's been good. Just pretty busy with, like, you know, last-minute internships and classes and work and stuff like that. Chrissy, we are so excited for you. I guess we're so many states apart, so I guess no one can make the joke like, oh, we need to stay off the roads. You'll never be on my roads, girl. <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit about my story. It was actually uh, not my plan to be a, a podcaster. I was just in it for the planning. So I remember we even had one meeting where we were talking about uh, who was going to join the podcast, if we had any friends that could join the podcast and speak. Um, but somehow uh, my plan for planning <laughs> turned into participation. So what elements helped? And a, not a lot like what everyone said um, in the chat is uh, adult support. <laughs> that was one of the main uh, things that kind of held me back a little bit, even joining the podcast was, was this going to be like another lecture? Was this going to be something where everyone's going to tell us what to do? We're just going to sit there, listen. Um, and that actually was not it. Right from the first meeting, we were treated with respect. Um, we were given important tasks like uh, running social media, uh, creating graphics, and we were made to feel important. Um, and throughout this whole, uh, every meeting, every meeting, we had professional communication between youth and adults. Um, and that's what made and helped this podcast move on slowly. And that's what created uh, one of the main players, the passionate teens. I definitely do not regret being a part of this uh, because not only did I learn that many uh, other young people had the same experience as me during COVID, but I also learned um, how I can apply uh, the things that we did throughout this podcast in my life. Uh, one of the main things is tolerance. Uh, not everyone on the podcast, if you listen, had the same opinions exactly about COVID-19 or um, just things in general. And so this definitely taught me how to be tolerant and how to uh, learn about others and learn about um, others' opinions. And a big thing is we, I learned how to communicate uh, with both young people and adults in a respectful manner. Um, no one's looking down on anybody. And that's what helped a lot in the podcast. And I'm also able to apply uh, some things I've learned, like the importance of social media and media just in general um, to, to the degrees that I'm going in uh, right now. So this podcast is so great. I'm so glad to be a part of it. And I'm so glad to be here with everyone. So that was Teens of Vaccines uh, podcast overview. Now let's continue by looking into more specific elements uh, that made this podcast thrive. Okay, so my name is Sophia, and I will be talking about the planning process that we went through for the podcast. But first, I'll talk about my story. So I joined the podcast 
as a yeah i joined the podcast be And hello, can you hear me now? Okay, okay. I deeply apologize, y'all. But um, a little 180 shift happened and I ended up being the co-host of the podcast, which ended up being really fun. Okay, thank you in the chat. <laughs> um, so yeah. So for the podcast, um, in terms of a timeline of events, we started in late April. Um, it was the early stages of our planning and we were just trying to figure out our intentions, um, what we wanna do, how we wanna do it, and what we want to get across to our audience. Um, from May to June, we focused on pulling together our topics, our plans, our dates, and practicing our first recording of the session. Um, from June, July, and August, we recorded, we recorded. Um, at this point, I'd say we were recording about um, every week or every other week. And by the end of August, we did our last recording for season one of our podcast. We're wrapping up um, for the academic year started because we are all very, very busy. <laughs> So on the next slide, because I have a lag, um, it shows our planning sheet that we had for our first meeting. As you can see, it's dated in April of 2021. And what it did was it outlined what we wanted to do and what we wanted to talk about. Um, we wanted to focus on misinformation and stigmas around the vaccine. We wanted to talk about future implications and what does that mean for us as young people. Um, and we also wanted to hit on things such as our experience throughout the pandemic, um, friends experience, family experiences. We just wanted to make it all encompassing and talk about the experiences of teenagers during this time because our story is not really heard. So as we did this, um, there were some guiding questions that we had for our planning process. Um, the first being, what do we want to symbolize? What do we want our podcast? Can y'all hear me now? Okay, hopefully you can hear me. I'll be fighting with this thing all day. We're gonna try to wrap this up because this is getting annoying. Okay, <laughs> so what we did was we had guiding questions for our planning of the podcast. Thank you, chat. <laughs> um, the first being, what do we want this podcast to mean for us and our listeners? Um, the sound keeps cutting out. Okay. Um, okay. Um, but what do we want this to mean for our listeners? Um, what do we want, how do we want to accomplish this um, through our interactions? Um, for example, do we want this to be a very formal podcast? Do we want it to be more conversational? 
we settled on conversational because um, we felt it would help us get our point across. What topics do we want to address um, going into our experiences, going into um, asking the expert questions, things of that nature. Um, what time is feasible for us? Um, it was summer vacation, so we were able to work around jobs and stuff like that. But if this was during the school year, we would have to ask us ask ourselves another question of what's feasible, and then the last being doing it, just executing our plan. So next for my sound cuts out again. Um, Social media marketing was another huge um, part of pulling our podcast together, talking about ways to market and create um, engaging content for our target audience. And our target target audience was people our age. So it was actually quite simple because we know what we liked and we were able to create content like that. So as You'll see this was the logo for our podcast. Um, we wanted it to encompass not only our diverse group, but also the fact that we are real teens sharing real stories about COVID-19, the vaccine, and all of that fun stuff. Um, and when making engaging content for our podcast, um, again, we were able to break this down to a series of Okay, I think I'm back. Um, okay, so how to make engaging content. Um, we like colorful, aesthetically pleasing, and well-produced content. Um, that's really how you engage young people. Um, meeting your audience where they are. Um, yeah, basically letting teens make content for teens and vice versa because we know what we like to see. Um, and I think it's hard to get into that mindset of what other people like if you don't experience social media the way they experience it. Um, and lastly, 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 thank you all for holding with me through cutting out this through the audio cutting out. But social media is a great way to create um, teen mentor partnership, um, a good way to foster that good relationship um, for engaging teens and for sharing any public platform. Thank y'all. <laughs> that was great, Michaela. I love that. You stuck through that, and I'm proud of you for that. Uh, my name is Alyssa McKenna, so I'll just be going over a bit of my story first. I was a high school junior when I joined Teens and Vaccines podcast, so I'm currently a high school senior. And I'm from Iowa, which is um, interesting, to say the least, when it comes to COVID-19. So I think like entering Teens and Vaccines, I don't, I didn't have any expectations really, because I didn't know what school-based health alliance was, and it seems to be a big thing everywhere else but yeah but meeting people from all different sorts of like walks of life especially with COVID-19 people from different regions was something that I really like appreciate when it comes out of this like entire experience because I think you can always kind of trap yourself especially in COVID-19 and quarantine and everything you can trap yourself in your own little story and think some things are unique to you and you don't know who to talk to about them, but Teens and Vaccines kind of was a way for me to communicate with peers my age about problems that I was experiencing, that they were also similar experience, similarly experiencing despite our different geographic locations. And so I'll be talking about media today. I think Michaela did 
some great coverage on social media previously. And <laughs> yeah, I'll be talking about me. So my form of media will be more focused on like the um like the conceptual part of media rather than just like how you market to people because i think marketing is something you can learn very easily with what, the sort of things michaela was talking about so first i think media and opinions have really shaped COVID 19 perspectives because when you think we i think a lot of us in the room in the conference know what group think is and a particular example that stands out to me and is like really jarring in general when you look back on it and how it affected the way we view COVID-19 now was that when like like when COVID-19 first hit, like there wasn't any quarantine, things like that, and we, early research was still being done. I think some research paper came out and said that like black people had lower rates of COVID-19. And then US news and every other like questionably credible news source you can think about took that and just ran with it. And they were like, black people can get COVID. But now we've seen over time that black people can get COVID and it's actually like a really big problem within the black community now is deconstructing that sort of um, like that sort of opinion that was formed as a result of marketing uh, as a result of media right as a result of the misuse of media and so it shows how big of an educate uh, big of a role media can play when it comes to educating people and so next is memory the more i don't know if it's like this for everybody but the more i see something the more i begin to believe it is it's true it's like when people post on their instagram stories like the same like post about a certain situation that i'm like oh i should probably like engage myself in that i think that's a, a really big part of media is accessibility and frequency the more accessible certain types of news are the more prone you are to like I don't know, engage with them. And the more frequent they are, the more prone you are to believe it. Because again, it goes back to groupthink. And it's like, if everybody is saying something, you don't want to be the only one who's like opposing it because you like, you can't like, it's just a problem of like, you don't want to look bad, right? It's not even that you want to look bad. It's just like, it's since it's that widespread, it's you're not necessarily prone to just like disagree with it. And I think media can also help people form communities in unique ways because even when you talk about the teens and vaccines podcast having a podcast and having like the internet to even sign up for a podcast has helped us form like a little community of people who like of adults and teens who engage to create like a bigger perspective on COVID-19 and another big thing is negative bias I think all of us are prone to having like really negative advice when it comes towards news in general. And so one thing the Teens of Vaccines podcast has taught me is to always find positives in the situation. And I think we, even you guys heard Chrissy's little story about like getting her driver's license. I feel like that is very like, it's so random and you'll find like random tidbits of information about us when you listen to the podcast. We'll go on rants about like our favorite shows. And it's, I think that's, the reason why podcasts are so impactful because it's not somebody just constantly lecturing to you and our podcast specifically you get to know who we are as people and why our experiences like really matter to us and why we chose to use a podcast to convey our experiences and so in this way i think i'm slowly beginning to become more of like an optimistic person when it comes to certain situations rather than just like focusing on like negative news and just like trapping myself in those sort of like pessimistic ideals um next is podcasts work uh i don't know about like everybody on the podcast currently but i think one big um one big realization i've had is that the teens and vaccines podcast has really like helped me to has really helped me i guess realize that podcasts are a way we can effectively create community and i think i talked about this before but it allows for us to create community facilitate growth and feel heard and this touches back on having a different perspective like different perspectives on COVID 19 right because like for example Kay, who's not in the presentation right now like Kay had covid and i somebody who never had who didn't have covid during this entire experience i think listening to her experience was really i guess stop provoking because i like I knew people who had COVID, but knowing Kay as some like knowing Kay personally, like through the podcast, helped me to realize I guess the gravity of the situation in a lot of areas in comparison to like how I might experience it now, and that my experience might like might be something that I should appreciate instead of kind of like viewing it as um, I shouldn't view the problem as just like 
through a single lens, I guess that is what I'm trying to get at. And it also helps you feel heard because we all have different stories and we're all kind of eager throughout the podcast to hear about people's different stories. I think you can kind of feel it build up, you know, in the first episode, we're not that close. We don't know who we like, who the other person is. Like we know each other's names, like barely sure. But then when you go through the episodes and by the time you get to like episode 10, you really feel like this connection we have and this community that we formed and like the flow of the conversation just goes like, really I, like the conversation just flies by and we have sometimes we filmed episodes and it's like they've taken an hour and then we've talked about like two completely different things and we've created more episodes out of that and so i think that's a way in which the podcast has allowed us has allowed us to really share these personal sides of ourselves but are also trying to um help public health professionals and then next is storytelling and narratives i kind of touched on this before uh, I personally believe that storytelling is one of like the best ways to connect with people because it allows for you to sort of um, view people in a, I guess, I don't, it like, it almost impacts like your humility, right? Because personally, if I hear a fact, like, yes, the fact can be like really like shocking and like, like obviously show that like work needs to be done. But if I hear somebody's personal story and experience with an issue or a topic, that's when I'm more prone to take action. And that's how I feel like storytelling narratives can really like foster this sort of um, need for action and like material change in the world. And then the next thing is archives. We're experiencing a really weird time right now, even like last week, like, I think the entire experience is just like really, I don't know how it's going to play out. And we're like, everything is just like, I think I already told this story before, but um, like, I don't know, my friend offered me like M&Ms last week. And before I really wouldn't have questioned taking M&Ms, but now I question taking anything from people that they have touched because of how, like the impact of COVID-19 and like, I'm, really, I'm now kind of a germaphobe, which is like not a bad thing, but also like I think about it, I was not like that before. And we need to have archives. And I think podcasts are a good way to archive the experiences that we're going through and to look back on it and be like, wow, things have changed from then or things are kind of going back to normal or just like have something like, I guess have some material that we can hold on to and show as a record of our lives during this such like during this experience. And the next is communication. I think highlighting youth voices has definitely been a theme throughout the entire presentation. So I think podcasts allow for people to communicate a lot easier because I think I would, um, I would phrase it like this. Like when you watch a YouTube video of somebody, you get to know that one person. But I think because podcasts is usually implied that like a group of people run a podcast, right? having that group and following that group's story throughout their experiences i think is really unique and that's why i feel like this forms like forms of communication like podcasts are really cool because it allows you to know, get to know all different types of people including people like our guest speakers too next is successes versus areas of improvement i've I think I've had like the best experience in teens with vaccines probably, but I also can address, like can acknowledge that there's certain areas of improvement that we need to look at. So it's a success is that we had a variety of audiences. When I first joined teens and vaccines, I was under the impression that we were only communicating to teens. Um, I didn't really like know we were communicating to public health professionals until like episode six when somebody like mentioned it. And so I think that really showed me the variety of audiences that we've gained throughout this like time, uh, past like six months, I guess. But I guess an area of improvement for next season would be our social media presence. We have posts. It's it's not empty. We have posts. But I think diversify, diversifying our posts would be really helpful because currently our posts are just like our episode posts and I think having like more content or like more short form content would be uh, really amazing when it comes to building our social media presence and making sure that we're reaching as many people as we can because it goes back to that whole like accessibility and frequency thing. And next is guest speakers. We had a guest speaker in episode five and episode six, but I also think I want to feature more guest speakers because I think season one really established who we are as a podcast, right? It really established our individual personalities and like the sort of tone we want to set. But I think for season two, having more guest speakers and gaining a variety of experiences from not only like uh, from like from different types, sorts of public health professionals or from people who have unique stories, I think that would be really cool. Uh, next is engaging 
stories. We have very engaging stories. I've like the people in this presentation right now can attest to the fact that I think we've all grew like grown as humans and we've all kind of engaged with such like a variety of topics, first of all, but also a variety of perspectives. And so I think one thing you're never going to miss out on is like a very engaging story to listen to and to kind of enjoy as you listen to the Tease and Vaccines podcast. I would also say there is a lack of marketing efforts. This goes back to my previous point. You have engaging stories and the lack of marketing efforts. It doesn't mix because then who's going to like who can you really know is listening to your story if there is um is listen to this like awesome story if there's not enough marketing around like getting people to listen to it lastly is we had a variety of topics i think we covered a lot of things and we had the previous one that michaela showed but there are some episodes where we will just like kind of go off on like not tangents but we'll just steer off to a different topic and i think that's how podcasts are supposed to work even but having a bit more structure around what we talk about would be like a good like we'll probably make um editing for the adults that are helping us out easier but yeah we're really thankful to them so how to do it yourself um i think michaela has gone over this briefly uh, so first, you have to dis uh, discuss and decide the purpose of the podcast and what kind, like what goal you want to accomplish. So just establishing what people you want people to get out of your podcast, I think, is just like an overall like start that people should probably consider when they like. I guess when they start marketing a podcast, because if you don't know what the goal of the podcast is, you can't even spot, like find co-hosts to have like on the podcast and the next advertise and market the podcast to interested participants. I know one thing I actually, I keep trying to remember how I found the teens and vaccines podcast, but I genuinely could not tell you because I think some people know of school-based health Alliance, like on the podcast. And so that's how they joined. I don't know if I like just saw a post on it or like I saw a link, but I just remember like searching for something to do during quarantine. And that's how I found Teens of Vaccines podcast. So maybe advertising way earlier about Teens of Vaccines podcast would have been like a way to include more participants. Because I also feel like um, I think something people should consider is making the social media page prior to starting the podcast and then advertising the podcast that way. And then when you get things rolling, you can have like the participants kind of take over the social media page. And then third, meet with interested participants and start planning for a full season worth of episodes. We showed, I think we showed the, our plan before, but I think this is just a really basic step. You wanna kind of know what the structure is going to be, like meeting times, when people are available, where you're gonna have at each meeting, things like that. And fourth is discuss and uh, determine logistics, like who's in charge of marketing and arranging the episode agenda, et cetera. So I think this is an area of improvement that we also have to work on because uh, Ziara is really on top of social media. I think that's like kind of her role in the Teens of Vaccines podcast. And I'd like to see the teens, um, I'd like to see us kind of take the stress off the adults for next season and like maybe have us like arrange the episode agendas and kind of set um, more things up, I guess, backstage behind the Teams and Vaccines podcast. And I think that's a really big goal of ours moving forward. And you should also consider when you build your podcast, how are you going to transfer roles to these teens? And then lastly is a uh, market, market, market without an audience. Um, you may not have anybody to tell your stories to. We've told, uh, we've, I've talked about this before, but I think having an audience is really important because we have an audience by like the marketing efforts of Ciara and other adults on the Teens of Vaccines podcast, but we don't have as many as we could have. I think that's, I think that's what I'm getting at is that we have a lot more potential to grow our audience. And having this partnership between um, adults and teens, I feel like is very unique to the Teens and Vaccines podcast because without Selena, without Nicole, I don't think the Teens and Vaccines podcast would have been as successful as it is. So I just want to give a big shout out to all the adults that were involved in kind of creating the Teens and Vaccines podcast and ensuring that like all the episodes were edited and everything like that because honestly it grew to something it grew to something a lot more personal and to me and 
something that I'm a lot more connected with than I expected to be, I guess, connected with when I first joined, if that makes any sense. But yeah, just thanks. And we're going to move on to Zia, uh, not Ziara, Anita. Thank you, Alyssa. That was amazing. I'm sure we all learned a lot from your presentation. Um, so just to transition, uh, I'm Anita. Uh, I'm from Maryland. I am currently a high school junior. Uh, last year when I joined the podcast, I was a sophomore in high school. So just a little bit about myself. I personally found out about this podcast through my school's newsletter. Um, I joined because I thought that it would be a good opportunity for me to go outside my comfort zone. And I honestly, I had no idea what I was getting into. But as I participated in more and more recordings, um, I found reassurance in you know, communicating and interacting with others about my own life experiences while still having an influence on other people at a larger scale too. So to move on to the next slide, um, I will be focusing on reflecting on our impact. Okay, so the importance of our feelings. Um, so over the span of this podcast, we have encouraged teens all over the nation to recognize that they are accepted and valued um, as individuals. And, you know, as a team, we have tried to uplift each other by validating each other's feelings. Um, and this ultimately shows that our voices can have an impact. Um, so what we all went through, I'm sure you all know, was completely unpredictable and scary. But, you know, ignoring reality will only lead to destruction, um, which is why we gathered young people all around the country to express their emotions and thoughts since we all have the power to help one another. And that was our goal for this podcast. Next, um, I would like to hone in our, on our experiences. So this pandemic, or as you may have heard many times before, unprecedented times um, has swept across our nation, you know, contributing to masses of loss. And unfortunately, this has been a major burden to, um, to many people and families. Um, as a group, we find it crucial to overcome biases by being open to various opinions and beliefs, like Alyssa said. Um, so by having people to relate with who didn't know the definitive answer to worldwide problems like COVID, which we are facing right now, is what allowed us to bond. Um, as time passed, however, there were options and making sense of these options like the vaccine is what encourages us to debrief and converse over concerns and questions that we don't really get asked in other settings like school. Um, so it's really personal and which we can relate to on a deeper level. So what have we learned, um, right? The big picture. So this part is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so we strive as a group to become better, um, and we have done this despite being separated at great lengths. Um, you know, we all live in different states, and I think that's pretty cool because we all <laughs> still relate to each other um, and have gotten quite close. Um, but our main goal in starting this podcast was to reach and influence an audience, hopefully teens and health officials who can realize that this challenge that everyone has faced can be conquered if we all take the time to just listen. Um, that's quite powerful. And it's important to note that we may not all agree, but that's totally okay. Um, respect and compassion is what really has allowed us to connect and be better versions of ourselves, um, which, you know, has been evident throughout this podcast. So looking into the future, um, the vaccine was a huge step towards progress and a bright future that clearly consists of a new normal. Um, but educating our youth, of course, has and will continue to play a big part in achieving that milestone. Therefore, with all that said, we, the podcasters, would like to pose a question for you all. Um, so in one word, what is your goal for our future generation? Um, feel free to just type it into the chat and we will view your responses.
Yep, I definitely agree. Thrive, harmony, legacy. So definitely uniting um, in times of crisis, like with what happened with COVID. Overcoming the challenges, definitely. Connecting, like how we did through the podcast. And how anyone can do, you know, we have amazing tools right in front of us. (laughs) computers, technology. I like overcome, Alma. I think that's a really big, I don't know, I think that's a good word for it. I definitely agree with freedom. Um, With COVID, everything might have seemed, you know, you were isolated from the real world. So being able to express yourself definitely has an impact on your perspectives. I like to make the world your own, you know? I think a big part of the teen experience is that, I don't know, whenever I watch this, like, teen movies, it's about like adventuring into the world, discovering yourself and you can't discover yourself when you're like stuck in your room and have to like be with your family all the time. Even though I love my family, let me preface yeah. that, I love my family. But yeah, making your world your, the world your own in like a very difficult time is I think something the Teens and Vaccines podcast kind of achieved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely see that. And with Uplift, you know, we see in the media a lot these days, people, you know, tearing each other down and insulting each other. But on the other hand, we've like come together as a team and we notice the differences, but we still overcome with that with, you know, by being peaceful and understanding of each other, which is really important, I think. All right. Thank you so much, Anita, uh, for that presentation. Um, I just wanted to hop right back on and uh, I want to talk a little bit about the adults and the organizations that we worked with. So I want to shout out the school, uh, the school based health alliance and community center, um, the and the Weizmann Institute and Nicole and Selena, Karen, Erica, all the adults that really helped and helped uh, uh, push this podcast to be what it is, their support, their respect, um, and their uh, and their time to work with us on all this. Um, so I want to thank um, everyone and, and everyone, all the participants. They mentioned, uh, all you guys mentioned that uh, having an adult in your life is, uh, is very important. Um, and, and it's a positive impact on a youth and young adult uh, relationships. And I, I got to say, it's 100% true. And I think, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think this podcast definitely um, helped all of us to uh, learn about that. And uh, I kind of want to, I want to ask the girls, <laughs> um, so what did you appreciate about the relationships um, that we built with the adults and with each other and what you think the adults um, can learn and take home, uh, the adults, uh, the participants in this uh, uh, meeting um, can take home. I really appreciated the energy, like from the first episode with like Karen, Erica, Selena, Nicole, you could always like, I always knew they were there, first of all, because whenever we filmed them, like they turn off their cameras and they'd be there. So it was kind of weird to think about like people listening to me in real time. But like after each episode of shooting, they'd all like kind of congratulate us and they praise us, even though I know the first episode was rough. I know, <laughs> I know they were listening and they were like, this, we might need to work on it a bit more. But then like episode two, episode three, and then we started to click more. I feel like I really appreciate what like ZR keeps talking about, the respect they gave us and also all the encouragement and the support, even though they probably have like very busy lives as well. So yeah. Yeah, I agree with Alyssa. Um, 
I was gonna say support because the, like they took time out of their day to come and plan the podcast with us. I know sometimes we like ran up to two hours, um, like max. So, and that was approximately once a week, right? And that they just took a lot of time and energy um, to help us out. And they saw that we have a voice and we wanna express our voice, right? And that really had an impact um, on our life. So the support really, really is necessary um, for teens to be able to express their opinions, um, and be comfortable while they're doing it, you know, that's really important. Okay, so, hey, um, what I appreciated about the relationships that I was able to build with um, the adults who helped us make the podcast was the fact that it was unlike any other relationship that I had formed with an adult. Um, Okay, um, I'll start over. I felt like it was a different relationship than I have formed with um, other adults in things um, such as high school and even in university because I was on Zoom University my freshman year. Um, and I feel like what adults in this workshop can take home is to make youth feel important and to make them feel that feel feel validated um because it doesn't it's very hard to find and i think when adults start making teens feel validated we'll really start to see a shift and we'll really see um more come alive in terms of what young people can do for the world but that's hard to do when we feel stifled. I I think I agree with all the responses. And I don't know if you, the participants, can kind of see a trend going on. Respect, taking time out of your day so that we feel kind of respected. Um, and so my response, same thing, with the respect. I remember um, even when I had some questions, I would email Karen, Nicole, Selena, Erica, and I would get a response right away. <laughs> um, and I think it's just so nice because we weren't just put off on the sh like on the shelf, like, oh, we're just team podcasters. We were given important tasks. We were given um, responsibility and and lots of respect. And and I think we were able to see that through the time that they gave us and the way that they even rescheduled things. Sometimes people couldn't be on the live podcast, so we'd have to record a side. Um, and and they they still tried to find a time. Um, to have every single person that was on that podcast be on the next episode. Um, so that showed just how important each and every one of the podcasters were to these organizations and to these adults. And so I think that really made the podcast thrive. Um, and so uh, now I, we, if you, if any of the participants have some questions about the podcast, about us, um, now's the time to ask. Uh, you can pop those questions right into the chat. Um, and yeah. I don't see any questions coming in yet. 
So we'll give people another minute. Hi, this is Nicole. Um, okay, I see one question, um, and this is for you all to answer. Um, uh, what are some key messages adults should share with young people regarding the COVID-19 vaccine? I think uh, actually we had, I think that's one of the reasons why we kind of had, um, it was episode six, uh, I think it was uh, with the expert. Um, I think that's, I think we had a lot of those questions too, like, um, like having support on even like having the vaccine and um, like what, what, uh, I don't want to say consequences, but what effects there might be um, after getting the vaccine or like how life will be after the vaccine or um, and I feel like that might be a question <laughs> that a lot of adults probably don't know either. Um, but I, I guess just sharing just information, I, I guess unbiased information. Um, as far as regarding uh, the vaccine. And uh, you know, uh, just everyone giving us the information and, and how uh, we can know what is true and what isn't. And just, I guess, a main thing is um, teaching us how to interpret information um, that we hear on the news, um, even on social media. Like, a big thing that adults can help us is teach us how to interpret information and determine stuff for ourselves. Thank you, Zira. Alyssa, Anita, Michaela, anybody else have things that you would like to learn? Yeah, um, I think also sharing, I think if you, I think I would like to learn, I would have liked to see more coverage of like the way other countries besides the US are dealing with COVID because I think it was kind of like shoved in front of my face that like, um, like the gravity of the situation in the US when it came to COVID very later on, but like earlier on when COVID was like just beginning and it was more so of an issue in like more select places, I think the coverage on it was really selective. And I understand that because obviously like that's the audience, like if, you're, you, if your audience is the United States, you're gonna cover things that are related to the United States. But like, I don't know, like having family in Kenya right now who are like just starting to experience like the gravity of the situation when it comes to COVID and me not being able to like having like go out of my way to know what they're experiencing and what the global like experience of COVID is like, I think is really inconvenient. So I think covering that more and also just if framing, I think there's a lot of negative news that's coming out of COVID-19, but framing it in a way that's like, there is still hope, right? So if you give like, if talking about like the Delta Plus and the Delta variant right now, like that's a very big issue that we're facing. So maybe giving us the facts on that, but then still framing it like there are people working on like finding some sort of like booster for the variant, things like that. Just help like accompanying the bad with the good. So we're not just like always being fed like bad news, I feel like is probably really important. Yeah, I agree with Alyssa. And like, um, just to add to that, you know, um, having, when presented with the options, um, digging deeper into why someone has a certain perspective and why they made the choices that they did. Um, because I know personally on our podcast, there wasn't as much that diverse perspectives, but um, having, you know, a closer look at that aspect, I think would be helpful. Um, but other than that, you know, I know we focused on also external factors like parents, friends, which all influence your choices as well. Awesome. 
Well, thank you, um, Anita, Alyssa, and Sienna, and Michaela. Um, I don't see any other questions, so we're going to go ahead and, oh, I see one right now. Um, it says, there are many young people, late teens, early 20s, who choose not to get the vaccine. How have you held those conversations on the podcast? Uh, thanks for a great presentation. Um, and I think we actually do have an experience, right? Um, we have Kay who transitioned. Uh, so we would like to speak a little bit more on that. Um, I'd like to think everybody who went on to get the vaccine, because even when you say many, I'm trying to think of like personal friends who haven't gotten the vaccine, but all, that also just might be like the group of people that I circle around. And I don't know if it is like, I don't think we should frame the question as like many young people, but rather just as many people. Cause I think, I don't think the problem is in relation to your age, but rather in relation to like how you're experiencing the vaccine. Because I know for some people, like talking to my cousins in Kenya, I think part of a lot of people in Kenya not getting the vaccine is like not having enough trust in the medical industry and as like, as a general, like public health. And I think it's valid a lot of the times when it comes to certain areas, because like, I don't know if people are experimenting on your people for like vaccines and then like they give you <laughs> like experimenting on your people for vaccines and then they give the vaccines to like Western countries and then they come back to give you the vaccine, but haven't addressed the issue of like why your people are being experimented on or why like getting the vaccine was like took that long or why they haven't addressed health, other health issues in your country, like HIV and AIDS, things like that. I think that is a very like valid perspective on how like there's areas of trust that need to be resolved when it comes to like public health, um, like industries as a general and uh, like certain countries. But when it comes to people, I guess here in the US, I think it can be a variety of things. It can be like, as well as having like mistrust in public health industries, but it could also just be like, the way media feeds you news because i think a lot of things are politicized and unfortunately so is like the COVID 19 vaccine it's held in this sort of form of like if you believe in it you believe in certain other things and if you don't believe in it you believe in certain other things and obviously things shouldn't be like that but that's just something we have to learn to kind of resolve yeah i think we talked a lot about that in the podcast uh, several times we also mentioned um or Nicole mentioned that Kay, one of the other podcasters, um, was actually hesitant to get her um, vaccine at first, and then uh, she ended up actually having it scheduled. I think uh, we also discussed on the podcast, uh, well, Alyssa touched on it, um, about media and how it's portrayed. So um, mm -hmm. we talked about how uh, the news cared a lot about um, adults who was more vulnerable. And so the media is telling um, us that, oh no, if you're an adult, then that's, you're in more trouble. So I feel like a lot of young people also have the idea of, um, I don't need the vaccine because I'm not gonna be um, as uh, hurt by uh, COVID if I get it. And uh, I think we mentioned that in the podcast and we were kind of discussing that um, as well. Yeah, I definitely agree with both of you. I think also this was the whole purpose of the podcast, right? We came on to talk about our opinions and um, throughout that, or, you know, while we talked, we debunked the myths, right? Um, and so that's what led us to have a broader perspective on things and um, understand where these, um, mis where misinformation comes from which is, you know, comes from bias. And we were trying to focus on being unbiased, but, you know, it happens. We, we think something to be true when it's not, but that's why we're all here to help each other out. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Awesome. I don't want to I don't want to wrap up and there be another question that just popped up in the chat. So I'm I'm waiting um, before I wrap up. Um, all right. 
All right. Well, I want to thank everyone that came uh, to listen to um, Alyssa, Anita, and uh, Michaela and I. Um, we are so happy to be doing this. I was very psyched <laughs> to hear that we had the opportunity to do this. Um, so if you want to connect with us, we are, are on we are the podcast on SoundCloud. Um, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're also on Spotify. You just look up Teens and Vaccines, and that's where you can find us. You can also contact us on our Instagram, which is teens.n.vax, V-A-X. That's right on the screen. Um, uh, I had such a great time <laughs> being here um, and seeing all these lovely ladies again. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead, and you can go ahead and connect with us uh, through there. All right, again, thank you so much. Um, ladies, any last words that you would like to say before we wrap up? Um, I had a great time. I think like the presentation went really well and I wanna especially give a shout out to Michaela because Michaela is like an amazing person and I don't know, I appreciate her like sticking it out and going through all these Wi-Fi problems and being here with us. And I also want to give a shout out to Nicole and everybody that listened to us today. Yep, thank you for our audience. Thank you guys for all being here. Um, we appreciate you all.